Hey, Brass Facts here. There are few spaces in the firearm community where newcomers have so aggressively upended the status quo as with tactical flashlights. For the uninitiated, I'll give you a quick down and dirty rundown because you like it dirty. Lumen is basically total output. Candela first how much light concentration you get downrange. Yep. Roughly speaking, all else held equal. Candela functionally is a trade-off, converting spill into focus. Fixed lumen, low candela, diffused light. Fixed lumen, high candela, you get much more of a spot relative to the previous one. This won't be the video to explain why, but for the general accepted wisdom for rifles, high candela lights are significantly more versatile than standard high spill lights. A typical Surefire M600 dual fuel or the Streamlight HLX, both of which have very similar performance and are spill focused, will cap out at about 100 yards, but frankly and more realistically, high candela hyper throws like the Modline OKW or the Malkoff E2 XTL, wow I did that one take, could be reasonably expected to hit around 200, maybe 300 yards depending on contrast on target, while still being very much viable in closer range due to lighting techniques. Also. I'm going to mention the term scout body compatibility a fair bit. Surefire was, have become the modern white light standard with the M600 scout body. Everyone has basically copied this. Which means if you have a scout compatible head, body, or mount, you can use a plethora of wallet destroying accessories to Gucci up your little light. Speaking of wallet destroying, good not to get overly caught up in white light frenzies. Candela is nice, performance is nice, yes. Three to four hundred dollars for a white light gets really fucking silly really fast. If you got the money to spend, send it, sure. But I think for many people where money is tight or where you have a lot on the checklist for preparedness, that money is very much spent better elsewhere. Do not fall down the rabbit hole where you think you need to be on the cutting edge of a performance always. Buy what you need, be happy with what you have. Okay, the rain three. It's a light. Wow, amazing. It's brighter than anything thus far, beating out the Gen 1 hyperthrow candela lights and obviously beating out more traditional style weapon lights. The increase in range is really tough to distinguish in practice. Most of the performance gains I noticed were actually due to brighter spill, which is apparent in dark environments where you may struggle to find targets. This increase in spill manifests at roughly speaking about 100, 150 yards, both where a mod light OKW and a Malkov E2 XTL. God tend to lose some steam. There are other factors that benefit having a very bright light like this, namely photonic barrier defeat, looking through lights, essentially speaking, or just using the light on a very bright night, looking into a shadow. Also, when you shoot, especially on colder nights, which nights tend to be, you will find that you often create a very large smoke cloud. And some lights, specifically the flood style ones, be it the HLX, the M600, you name it, very often may struggle to cut through this. The light will illuminate the smoke, but there won't be enough light downrange that you can see your target through your smoke cloud and you're gonna to tend to need the sidestep. For certain ranges, these hyperthrow lights put enough light downrange such that your target illuminates sufficiently that you can see it through your now illuminated smoke cloud and you could shoot just that little bit more. It weighs 6.9 ounces with the battery and tape switch making it marginally, and I do very much mean marginally, uh, heavier, than the previous generation of lights in similar configurations. Finally, it can use both CR123s and 18650s. This is useful for infield battery swaps. Generally speaking, you wanna use 18650s. Cheaper, you can keep charging them. But for reloads, so to speak, in the field, which will occur, CR123s are much more ubiquitous and basically all equipment uses CR123s, so it creates less of a strain to have both CR123s and 18650s. I like that. There are other nice little features like the end cap being spring loaded and two piece, which I don't want to show you because YouTube sucks an entire nut and will somehow view that as firearm assembly because it's already attached to the firearm or something. So just use your imagination. But this really is actually quite useful as it's both spring loaded and the end cap unscrewing doesn't change the tightness setting or the pressure on the battery, so to speak. This is in contrast with something like a Surefire dual fuel but can also occur in the aforementioned hyperthrow lights as the tail cap gets even slightly loose under recoil and the prerequisite pressure, so to speak, is lost and you get a flickering light. Not a game changer, just make sure your shit is tight, but the amount of times one of my lights have begun to flicker because I didn't tighten it all the way, uh, it's a nice thing to see on a premium product. All of this will cost you 400 bucks all said and done, which is about 100 bucks more than the standard offering. That is actually less brutal than you might think. All other lights in this range only come with a body, head, and basic tail cap. To get other lights to this level, you're gonna need to buy a DS00 Surefire end cap, 
combine it with an SRO7 tape switch, roughly speaking, these two will set you back about 150 bucks. If you want to swap out the SO7 tape switch with a mod button light, no, not not light, but light, like light, wait, fuck you mod light, uh, it'll now cost 170 bucks compared to the Rain 3.0. So, Rain 3.0, if you like the tape switch, this is a clear cut winner. But do you like the tape switch? This is the tape switch you get. This is the only tape switch you're gonna get with the Rain 3.0. With some exceptions, uh, you can actually get a aftermarket add-on that allows you to use Surefire stuff, but that doesn't actually change the price. You have to buy it with the tape switch. So unless you're okay with spending 600 plus dollars on a white light setup, functionally speaking, the Cloud Rain has one tape switch and it's the tape switch that comes with it. How's the tape switch? Well, uh, it's okay. It really depends on the rifle setup, and I'll explain that in a second, if it'll really jive with you or not. The actual tape switch component itself, the injection molded piece, has some ups and some downs. It's fairly large, uh, but Cloud actually utilizes some of that space. If you can see, the cable comes out of the side, uh, which is omnidirectional, allowing you to actually feed the cable out the left side, out the right side, or you can feed it around the front and then have it feed out the opposite side, using up a lot of your excess cabling. Very useful, a kind of a rudimentary cable management system which allows you to, you know, not use a zip tie or hopes and prayers that the whole thing gets torn out. Uh, that being said, that comes with the downside of this tape switch is kind of bulky, right? It does sit higher than basically all other tape switch on the market, the Surefire, the Mod, uh, mod Button, you name it. But not only does it sit higher, it also sits longer because the screws are mounted in the forward and rear position and they use fairly large screws. You get about two Picatinny, almost, Functionally speaking, three Picatinny sections ahead of the button itself that are used up and three Picatinny sections behind the tape switch that are used up. A lot of your rail estate is going to be taken up by this tape switch. Not really a big deal if it's a white light only gun. In fact, big tape switches are nice in that context, but in, the terms, of, in terms of night vision with something like this, or worse yet, uh, when you use a a laser aiming module that kind of calls for a tape switch, ones that don't have as intuitive buttons as this USMV DIRV, uh, you're gonna find that this thing really gets pushed really far back. And that might be an issue with uh, because of how the buttons are configured. Speaking of which, how are the buttons configured? Well, for starters, we have a constant and momentary at the tail cap position, half press for constant, full press for momentary, uh, the usual shit. And we also have another constant back here, and then we have our momentary up front. Obviously this thing can be flipped, so you know, whatever position you want it. The reason why I mentioned uh, tape switch positioning is kind of critical with this thing is, well, uh, this thing was very much, or at least the momentary was very much designed to be used in a fashion that kind of prevents white light NDs. This thing is kind of hard to actuate from any other angle other than kind of coming in from the rear or directly from the top. Even if you kind of, even if you do like a thumb roll technique, you know, where you just have, you just blob your thumb over on top, it's actually kind of hard to actuate it. And even if you actuate it, you can see the light, it's flickering because I, I can't get the, the switch depth required essentially to uh, cause light activation. And even if I do, it's very uh, tenuous, it's right on the edge. So under recoil, uh, I often found the light was flickering. This is obviously solved by simply pressing with the you know the, the main area of your thumb directly down onto the light or at a slight angle. Uh, this is kind of awkward in night vision setups like this because the night vision takes up the primary position and I have my light as a backup position over here. That being said, I can just shift my hand back and kind of accomplish it fine. It's just worth noting this setup is very positional dependent and sometimes you find this may not just work on your gun if you got night vision on it. If you don't, probably won't be an issue. And in fact, the fact that it's harder to use may actually be a noticeable upside. You know, no white light NDs. I do have a slight gripe on the fact that the constant is included on this system in the way that it is. For starters, the constant is on the tape switch. I don't personally, for my techniques, feel like we want a constant on the tape switch. But even if we did want a constant on our tape switch, which some of you may very well want, uh, it's kind of awkward because it's a release activation. So if you instinctively, you know, grip your gun and you want to use it right now and you want white right light and you train for the constant, well, you're going to press and nothing's going to happen. You have to actually release to get the light to come back on and or come on. And that's, I don't like that, right? That's to me, that's unintuitive. When I want to do something, I'm going to grip and do the thing. I don't want to grip, release, grip, 
uh, which is what you're going to do with a setup like this. Now, you could train around it, but it just seems backwards to me. Furthermore, uh, if you use this constant on, you need to be very careful because it's actually hypersensitive. Like, look at this. Right? I can't do that with this thing. That's the momentary that I'm slamming right now. That requires a lot of effort. The constant, if you just grip this in the wrong way, it will turn the light off. Seems odd to me, right? Uh, so personally, I don't like this constant on the tape switch. I'd much rather they just hack the thing off, let me use the constant on the back of the, the light, and then shave down some of the space here and solve like 90% of the gripes I have with this thing. So why does Cloud force us to use this tape switch? Wouldn't it not make sense for them to sell it as a separate item and you can choose between Surefire and their shindig? Yes, I mean, that would be nice, but according to Cloud, modern Surefire switch switches do not put out the sufficient current to actually power these lights. The circuit literally cannot handle it, and thus you get an output drop. And Cloud is completely right. The Surefire setup right here drops my OKW by about 10 to 20%. Who knows? Numbers, whatever. I don't have a tool to measure it. The current drop is far more noticeable with something like this HRT head, which needs noticeably more current as it's a newer, brighter style light in the same vein as the RAIN 3.0. In the picture, you can see, yeah, that's indeed a output drop. The mod button is a bit trickier. Yeah, on paper, they're shy of the correct power output, coming in at about 18 amps. But in practice, I did not notice a difference with the HRT head. Once again, almost the same power as the RAIN 3.0, swapping between the standard tail cap and the hypothetical neutering that would occur when I plugged it into a mod button. All right, let's send it. Buying recommendations. Should you buy this thing? Really depends. The first thing you need to really consider is the footage that you saw, specifically the pictures, was very much designed to accentuate how much more powerful the RAIN 3 and the HRT head uh, are over other options on the market. At realistic ranges, 100 yards or so, that difference is much less pronounced. So if you already own a hyperthrow light, or frankly even a regular light, I wouldn't look to upgrade unless you really need that performance. However, what if you need that performance, or maybe this is a new rifle build, and you got the money to light on fire? Well, this could, this could very much be a good option for you. Once again, it comes back to that tape switch. Do you like the tape switch? Is the tape switch tolerable to you? Well, if you like the tape switch, this is a no-brainer. This is top-end, high-end performance, like Cloud is known for, and you get it at, frankly, a cheaper price compared to the competition. Remember, the tape switch comes in notably cheaper than other options on the market. However, if you're lukewarm on the tape switch, or especially you don't like the tape switch, I wouldn't try the force this. This performance already exists with a HRT head strapped onto a body of your choice. I think you should not underestimate the value in having a Surefire compatible system. Not only is it convenient for setting up, purchasing, and buying accessories, but it also future-proofs yourself. The RAIN 3.0, much like the 2.0, represents the pinnacle of extreme Cantella autism, where having the best is a pursuit in and of itself. And it's also a fairly good value proposition when the versatility of a Scout-compatible system isn't really needed. So, yeah. Well, that's that. Thanks for watching.